Morning everybody, welcome back to, well, ex Friday Exercises with Fendi and welcome back to my room again. So as you guys have known, um, we have, um, hang on, let me just lower the volume of the phone. Okay, so um, yeah, welcome back and we're resuming this Fitness Friday with Fendi again. And right now, I think um, most of y'all have been very, very good and professional with the exercises that you've done. I mean, after seeing you guys back at uh, HWC and speaking with 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 everyone. Um, I think everyone is now a professional at doing home exercises. So the purpose of this video is because during the time when HWC was reopened, um, a few of you have come up to me and asked, okay, am I doing this exercise correctly? Am I doing this exercise correctly? All right, but um, what I want to clarify for everybody is because different people have different um, obviously limitations in their range of motion and everything. So at the end of the day, do what's most comfortable for you, but there are obviously certain limitations to the way you should be doing um, certain exercises. So for the exercises that we'll be doing today, just a precursor to it, we will be doing about six, if I'm not wrong, six exercises, but we won't be doing like, you know, oh, three sets of 10. We'll just be doing one set of 10 um, but prior to each set of the exercise, I'll be showing you guys what to do, um, how to do it correctly, and the common mistakes that happen when you do these um, type of exercises. So, without further ado, okay, just remember, I mean, you guys know the drill. If you're, if you're unwell, if you have any injuries, okay, or if you've forgotten to take on your medication and, and whatnot, um, or if you haven't eaten um, breakfast at least half an hour before, if it's a heavy meal, two hours before, all right? Um, please, please, please don't exercise today. Watch the video later when it goes, um, when it gets uploaded um, again, both to Facebook and to YouTube. All right, so before all that, what I want to do right now is to make sure that we all have enough space to exercise. And obviously, before any exercise, we'll do a short warm up. Okay, so those of you who are ready to join me in the exercise, have a stand up, make sure there's some space around you. So what I normally do is I'll just do a sweep, you know, like the AED stay clear. Okay, just do a sweep. If you can't touch anything, that means you are pretty much, okay, I almost hit my cupboard there. You're pretty much in the clear, okay, because that's all the space you be needed for, at least for warm up, actually. All right. So when everyone's ready, let's get marching on the spot to raise our heart rate a little bit. Okay. We're just doing a short five to seven minute warm up. Okay. We'll get moving. Arms forward. All right. Okay, also another gentle reminder, if you guys are not comfortable doing exercises in the home, if you feel like it's oh, it's very unstable, um, arms out to the side, uh, you can wear shoes indoors, but for the purpose of the, the video, I will not be wearing my shoes. But if you feel like, you know, your home, the floor grip is not as great, you can always wear shoes. Okay, arms up. Okay, hands on shoulders, forward shoulder rotation. And backwards. Okay, relax the hands, continue marching, arms across the chest, shoulder stretch. Now, if you guys have any questions for me, do type it down in the chat and I will try my best to uh, compile all these questions and read it out um, at the end of the session. And change, other side. And obviously, a very good morning to everyone who's here. <laughs> All right, release. Tricep stretch behind the back. You don't have to touch. Normally I can't because I'm inflexible like that. And change, other side. Okay, release. Interlock the fingers behind the back. Stretch out. Doesn't have to be really far. Just stretch out, interlock, and continue marching. All right, slowly stop marching. One hand on the waist, the other hand reach over, side stretch. It's been a while since you guys have worked out with me. And change, other side. Don't worry, my room has not changed at all. Okay, back to the center. All right, 
Both hands on the waist, trunk rotation all the way to the back. And change, other side. Okay, back to the center. Now we're going to do a front thigh stretch. What you can do is obviously grab a back rest, like a chair. Okay, it will be, oops. No. Okay. Check that there for a while. Okay, you can use the back rest as a support because if we're doing front thigh stretch, bend the knee and stretch this way. If you can't, for those of you who can't stretch that way, you can always put your leg on a, on a surface and stretch it that way or on the bed. <coughs> Just make sure you're well supported when you do this exercise and change at the side. Okay, next we're doing hamstring stretch. I'm gonna show the first one in standing, right heel forward. Sit back, reach down, keeping the back straight. Okay, if you guys can see my back, my back is straight. Okay, I can't touch my toes if I don't bend my back, but that's okay because this is way, this way we're doing it correctly. Okay, slowly come back up. The next one I'll be doing in sitting. Okay, so this is how you do it in sitting. Right leg forward. I'm gonna scoot back a bit so you guys can see. I mean, sorry, left leg forward. Keeping the back straight again. Reach down and stretch. Just feel a slight tug on the back of your leg and that should be the stretch. Okay, back to the center. All right, we're gonna do a lunge stretch. Basically, the lunge stretch stretches both our hip flexors and our calves. Toes pointing forward, body straight. Bring your whole body forward. Okay, don't let the uh, heel of the back leg lift the ground. All right, so that we can stretch both our calves and our hip flexors on the same side. Keeping the body nice and upright. And change, other side. Excuse me. Okay, back to the center. We're doing ankle rotations now. I'm already like perspiring, even though I'm in the aircon, because that's what some warm ups should do. And change other side. Okay, and that's it for warm up. I hope everyone's all warmed up. So, also remember. Take some time in between exercises to actually have a drink of water. Right now, I'm going to have a drink of water. <sighs> okay, so first out of the six exercises today that we'll be going through is we'll be doing squats. Now, everyone thinks squats, just squat law, okay? But it's not exactly that way. Because if you squat wrongly, you may actually injure your knees, especially your um, the top of your knees and also your back if you don't do it correctly, okay? A lot of the physios in every single H um, Heart Awareness Centre has been teaching patients how to do it, um, how, teaching our clients how to do it correctly, okay? But today, let me just find which is the best position for me to show it in. This way? Yeah. Okay, far enough back. Okay, I'm going to do a quarter profile to show you guys what to look out for, and then I'll show you guys a side profile. So basically when we squat, a lot of people just squat with their knees like, like that, okay? So you see what happens to my knees and my toes, okay, you can't really see. Okay, you see what happens to my knees and my toes? My knees go forward of my toes. That's number one. So just remember these points, okay? I'm just gonna show a side profile, okay? Because if you squat, okay, why do I have the chair behind me? Because a lot of people, when we do the squat, they tend to be very afraid of falling backwards. For the first few times that you do it, it's completely normal to, you know, feel a bit uncomfortable without having a chair behind you. So what I suggest doing is do it over the edge of the bed, okay, like a sit to stand, or just have a chair behind you, okay? So, number one, make sure your knees don't cross your toes. But then you might be un you might be wondering, then how I go down, okay? Watch what I do with my hips. I push my hips back, okay, into a squat. Barely touch the chair, and then back up again. You can put your hands forward to have a bit more balance, okay? What you don't want to do is squat like that, 
Oof. Can you see that? That was my knee. I'm so sorry. Okay, that was the sound of my knee going, help! That's not good. Okay, so going forward again, all right, this is not a good way to do a squat. All right, you don't want your knees to go forward too much. Okay, in order for your knees to stay behind your toes, okay, in order for your knees to stay behind your toes, you need to push your hips back. All right, in order to push your hips back, arms forward for balance. Okay, this way for balance. Okay, push your hips back as if you are going to go sit on the chair. Okay, but don't sit on it yet. So, arms up for balance, push the hips back, and look what happens to my knees. It does not cross my toes because why? The, the way the body balance works is that when you have so much weight going forward and so much weight going back, the knees just automatically just stay in place. Okay, so this is a half squat. I'm not going down all the way yet, but if I want to go down to a normal squat, I'll just go, touch the chair, and come back up. You don't have to go to parallel, don't have to you know, go all the way down, but that's how we do the squat. All right, so remember the important points of the squat are knees don't cross your toes, all right, arms forward for balance, sit back, okay, into a chair, okay. Eventually, when you guys get better, you don't have to use a chair, but regardless, I, even for me, I've been doing squats for a lot of time, uh, uh, many years, I still use a chair just for some feedback that I'm doing it correctly. All right, so arms forward, sit, and up. All right, so are we all ready to do 10 reps with me? All right, we're going to go really slow. Try to go on my count. You can just stand up. Again, give yourself some space. Try it out. Get a chair to go behind you, and we'll do 10 reps together. Are you all ready? All right, so arms forward. We're going to start 10 reps of squats in 3, 2, 1, let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine, and ten. Okay, well done everyone, for those of you who followed along. Now, the common questions that I get when you're trying to do the squats is that you feel like, but I feel like I'm falling backwards, you know, my toes want to be lifting off. That should be the right feeling because why? The weight is all on your heels, right? Okay, the weight is all on your heels and you tend to want to fall backwards, hence why the chair is there. But as you get better, you will slowly find the pivoting point where your heels are so that your toes kind of feel light, all right? So when you do the squat, your toes kind of just feel light because you're actually a lot on your heels. Not completely on your heels like that and then you do the squat. No, that's not a good one. You have to be flat-footed but light on the toes, okay? Imagine if there's a very small grape in front of your toes. You don't want to be crushing the grape, so that's where you do it that way. All right, for the next exercise, okay, we'll be going through is the lunge. Okay, so the lunge is very similar to the squat in the sense, okay, that you would want to be doing, okay, lunging position. Remember, the lunge is not a very shallow lunge. That's a common misconception. Like when you lunge, oh, as long as I put one foot forward, one foot back, that's already a lunge. You know, and people do this, that kind of thing. Okay, but it's not that way. What you want to do during a lunge is making sure you are quite wide. The wider you are, the more stable you will be, okay? So you can have your heel up because this is not a calf stretch, it's a lunge, all right? Toes pointing forward. Okay, I'm gonna show you on my, on my, on my right leg first, all right? The heel can come up. So look at how wide I am in my stance, all right? So what you want to do right now is go down. Imagine an elevator, you're not going forward, Okay, the good news, the good thing is that my, my cupboard has like these lines of marking. So you can see my body is perfectly, okay, I'm going to align myself. Okay, it's in the middle of the, the screen slash the cupboard. So you can see, like I'm going to travel like an elevator and I'm going to go down. Okay, I'm supported by, by this chair here. Okay, so what I'm doing is down and up. I'm not going forward. Okay, look at this, I'm going forward. So that's not the way you do the lunch. I'm not going backwards as well. All right, I want to go down. And how do you do that? You bend both knees, okay, at the same time. All right, 
similar rule to the squat, you're not letting the knee of the front leg go past your toe. Alright? So it's the similar rule of the squat that you do it this way. So remember, we're going to do it with our knees staying behind our toes and traveling up and down like an elevator. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few repetitions and then eventually we'll start to do the 10 reps again. Alright, so remember, supported down. I don't even have to go all the way down. Okay, so my knee stays behind my toes and my body just goes up and down. All right? I'm not going down all the way till my knee touches the ground. I don't have to. I can even just do up, up, up. Yeah, that way. Okay, so without further ado, so now I realize obviously there's, there are two legs. What we're going to do is 10 repetitions on the right leg and 10 repetitions on the left leg. I'm going to show you guys one in side view, okay, and one in a quarter view whereby I'm facing it um, 45 degrees away so you can see roughly different angles. Okay, are we all ready? Okay, so I'm going to do it with my right leg in front again, facing the side view way. Again, nice and wide, wider, base of support, better, okay? So when we're ready, oh, I'm going to make sure my support is nice and stable. We're going to do 10 reps together. Remember, three points, knees not across your toes, body up and down, and don't have to go down all the way. It's actually quite straightforward, okay? Wider the base of support. All right, 10 reps of lunges on our right leg, okay, or whichever leg you're starting with first. We're going to start in three, two, one, 10 reps, and go one. Two, three, four, five, six. Continue where we left off. I'm so sorry once again about the technical issue whereby my computer just started to not work. Completely my fault for the PC just completely just stopping. But we'll, we'll, we will still continue where we left off, which is the lunges. I'm going to redo the one in the side view. Okay, just a quick recap. Remember, you need to be wide base of support. Number one. Number two is not to let your knees cross your toes. Okay. And number three is treat yourself like an elevator and go up and down. All right. So just three steps. Okay. Wide base of support. Treat yourself like an elevator and go up and down. If you can't go all the way down, it's fine as well. All right. So we are going to go and start that um, side view 10 reps. Once again, in three, two, one, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Okay, that's the end of the first set of the lunges on our right leg. Now I'm gonna do a quarter profile. If I, you guys can see, oops, I need to reverse a bit more. Okay, how I do it um, in this direction. Okay, need to be able to like. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do the next set. Left leg forward now. All right, I'm gonna start in three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, and that's the end of the lunges exercise. So now you guys are professionals at doing lunges. So we're going to give our legs a break now and we're going to do some arm exercises, okay? So right now, we'll be doing shoulder presses. So join me in sitting, okay, for this time being, but you can do it in standing. I mean, I can show it off to you in standing, but my arms will be cut off, all right? So for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be holding anything, but at home, obviously, you guys are going to use um, dumbbells or resistance bands or like a water bottle for weights, okay? So the thing about shoulder presses, okay, don't overdo it, all right? It's very simple. 
If the weight is too heavy for you, lower it. Make sure it's not too much. Okay, again, three simple steps for proper shoulder presses. All right, when you push up, don't lock out the elbows. Okay, I can't lock out my elbows because my body is just not able to lock out. Okay, but don't hyperextend the elbows when you do shoulder presses. Whether, okay, I can actually. Okay, just make sure you push up and back down. Do not lock out the joints. That's number one. All right, number two is don't use too much of your neck muscles. I see a lot of people when they do with too heavy weights, they go like, Arr. okay, keep your shoulders down and just push from here without the neck, okay? Don't like, Arr. okay, don't use the neck to push up, all right? Just wanna keep your shoulders down and push this way. Last but not least, this is a very um, common mistake, but not a lot of people know about this mistake. So it's more obvious in standing, okay? When you do this, when you do a shoulder press, watch what happens to my back. All right, can you see that extension of my back? A lot of people, when they do this, they don't realize that by pushing up too far, they arch their back a lot. And that's what we don't want to do. Okay, because it's really a lot of stress on your spine and you don't want that, all right? What you can do is, if you feel like, you can do it in front of a mirror and then you can, you can see for yourself, okay? Just make sure you activate your core nice and tight, okay? Not chucking it in, but make sure you're nice and stable. And what you want to do is just push up. Okay, can you see that my back is not, I mean, I can have a bit of a curve to it. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see. I have a bit of a curve to it, but not an excessive curve. Okay, and obviously your arms want to go straight up. Okay, right. So, remember the three points again? We have, the first one is not to lock out your elbows. <laughs> Second point is not to use too much of your neck muscles. Last but not least, you don't want to hyperextend your back. Okay? So, ready to do 10 reps with me? Okay. So, let, I'm going to do it inside on again. And I'm going to go a bit closer because you guys don't have to see my feet. <laughs> okay? Alright. Body. I, I prefer sitting down doing this, but you can do standing up as well. Just make sure the back issue um, gets corrected when you do your uh, shoulder presses in standing as well, okay? So, arms by the side, core nice and tight, okay? And we'll begin in three, two, one, let's go! One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, as you can see, I didn't lock out my elbows too much as well. All right, so well done. We're halfway there. Okay, we've done three exercises. We're going to do another um, exercise in sitting, and these are for the Many of you who have done this exercise in the gym as well, okay, it's our seated leg extensions, okay? So, again, there's three mistakes. I like to just break it down into the most common three mistakes that people do, okay? The first one is obviously locking out the knees. Again, I can't lock out my knees because I'm just not that flexible, but so some of you guys, um, the knee tends to lock out when you, uh, when you kick too hard and then the knee goes into like a, like a locking position. That's not good, okay? Second thing is, I'm going to do it side on because it's more obvious in side on, all right? When you do seated leg extensions, watch what happens. And I come up, lean back. No, okay, that's the wrong way to do the seated leg extensions. What I would suggest doing is get yourself back all the way in. It's a bit, you know, weird. It feels a bit weird. Okay, my chair is a bit slanted back, but I prefer like a chair that's more upright, okay? Hold on to the chair, make yourself nice and stable, and look. 
you know? I don't have to go all the way up. I just keep it like that. Okay? Last but not least, the third mistake is doing it very quickly because I realized, you know, you might be thinking it's too easy, Fendi. It's too easy. Okay? It's easy because you're using the momentum. Right? What you don't want to do is use the momentum. Okay? I want you to keep nice and slow. Count yourself. It should be about three to four counts up and three to four counts down with a pause at the end, actually. So, example, I'm going to show you guys. Okay, some examples is one, two, three, four, pause, one, two, three, four, down. One, two, three, four, pause, one, two, three, four, down. One, two, three, four, pause, one, two, three, four, down. All right, the stability of the arms here with my fingers, I don't know if you guys can see that, is very important because it keeps you guys nice and stable for the actual exercise itself. Okay, so say it with me, the three points for seated leg extensions. Number one, do not lock out the knees. Okay, do not lock out the knees. I know some of you, are, some of you all who are super flexible that lock out your knees quite a lot, okay? Number two is lean back, okay? Don't lean back, all right? The leaning back is not a good thing because you don't want um, the body to help with the leg extension exercise. You want to keep yourself, again, okay, nice and stable. Leg extension, leg extension, leg extension, all right? And last but not least, take it easy. Go slow, don't, don't go. Don't swing your legs too fast, okay? Nice and controlled, because that's what exercises should be like, right? So, we're gonna do, we're gonna speed things up a bit. We're gonna go 10 reps, five on each leg, okay? We're gonna go alternate, so left is one, right is two, left is three, right is four, okay? I'm gonna scoot back a bit. Okay, quarter profile, okay. All right, so 10 reps, ready to go with me, okay? We're gonna start with our right leg. We're gonna go in, Nice and stable, don't forget, you can lean back if your chair is straight, okay? I like to keep myself nice and stable through my um, seat, okay? We're going to start in 3, 2, 1, let's go. And 1, up, pause, and 2, up, pause, and 3, up, pause, and 4. Pause and five, up, pause and six, up, pause and seven, up, pause and eight, up, pause and nine, up, pause and ten. And that was ten repetitions of the seated leg extensions. Are we all still good? We still have another two more exercises that we'll be doing today. Okay, next one, we're going to speed things up a bit, is hip abductions. Okay, no, okay, it's the one where you kick your leg out to the side. Okay, now, again, this is a very common exercise that, uh, that the physios have given you guys to do um, at home on your own. It's a very simple exercise. All you need is something to hold on for support. Probably a mirror in front of you so you can see your alignment. Okay, and you just kick out to the side, right? But it's easier than done because what you want to do is make sure you do it nice and slow, don't compensate, and be obviously nice and stable when you do this exercise. Okay, so the first thing I want you guys to remember is when you kick out, okay, watch what happens if I don't control my posture. Yeah, I do like a karate here yeah, kind of thing. You don't want to do that. My body is not aligned. It's going the opposite direction. This is for balance. Your body wants to do that. Which is why you have something to hold on to for support. Okay? And you don't have to go too far. Okay? Keep yourself nice and stable. Okay? Up. I, and down. I go slightly to this side, but not by much. Okay? Nice and stable. Up. And down. I'm already feeling it in my um, glute medius, whereby there's the muscle you'll be working on. Okay, and that's the range you should be going, actually. So, point number two is again, the same thing like leg extension speed. If you go fast, your body wants to go uh, all the way up, okay? Your body wants to go all the way up, all right? 
that's what happens when you go too fast. That's point number two. Last but not least, this is a, very, a, a little bit more complicated uh, of a tip than, than the most. Is because, look at my toes. That's why I'm standing this way, okay? My toes are always pointing forward, all right? Because if you turn your toe and point out this side, you're not using the muscles that we want you to be training. You're using actually more hip flexors than glute medius actually. It's the buttock muscle here that you want to work. Okay. Remember the three points. Okay. So the first one is watch your alignment. That's why I recommend doing the first few in front of a mirror to know that you're doing it correctly. You want to keep yourself nice and stable. Not too high. You don't have to go very, very high. Okay. And down. Okay. Up and down. Up and down. Down. Okay, obviously the next one is speed and obviously not going too far as well Okay, you can even do hold it with a support in the middle mm, Like that that way so you can really see whoop, chair is not stable Okay Not too high Last point is obviously not to turn the hip not to externally rotate the hip too much because that you're working on the hip flexors <laughs> Alright, so are we ready to do we can do 10 on each side. I think we have a bit of time to do 10 on each side. What we're going to do is 10 on the right leg. I'll swap the chair around to do a bit of a side profile thing with the, with the light in front of my face. Okay, and we'll do 10 from there. So when we're ready, we're going to do 10 reps on the right leg first. Take a break. 10 reps on the left leg. All right. Let's begin in 3, 2, 1. Let's go. 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that was the first set on the right leg. Now we're going to do left leg. Okay, oop, oop, oop. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay. All right. So, left leg. We're going to start 10 reps in 3, 2, 1. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that was ten reps on each side of the hip abduction exercise. Last exercise we'll be doing today involves using the resistance band. Okay, one of the more common favorite exercises that I hear people like to do is the bicep curl. No. Chuck my chair aside. Okay, so for the bicycle, you can use it with weights, but for the purpose of the, of the exercise, we'll be using the Singapore Heart Foundation resistance band. Okay, so what we'll be doing is I like to stand on my band. Anyway, I do this a lot. Um, I use this band at home. Okay, because I, I like the resistance because as you get further up, you feel it a bit more. I'm going to reverse so you guys can see my feet. Okay, so this way, okay, is how I do my resistance band. You can use a weight as well, so don't worry about it, okay? Number one tip, okay? Don't go fast because you need the tension in the muscles to be able to train the muscles itself. Again, this is all just momentum. I can do about like 200 of this if I wanted to, okay? But I'm not actually working out, all right? I want to go really nice and slow and controlled. That's tip number one. Tip number two is kyap the elbow. Okay, I don't really have another word for it. Maybe clamp the elbow, but I like to call it kyap. Because you know when you kyap newspaper, you kyap it here. Newspaper and you can well, go, for your, go for your walk. Okay, kyap your newspaper. Don't let the elbow go forward or back. Okay, kyap. And do your exercises this way. Okay. Last but not least tip is very similar to the shoulder press exercise. I see some people, they kyap, yeah, they kyap. Uh, uh, 
okay? So they, they lean back so much to get their hands up to compensate that they're not actually working their bicep, they're working their back, all right? So, three important points when you do the bicep curl exercise. I'm just going to scoot back. I keep going forward because I want to get, get closer to you guys. Okay, so remember the three important points is take it easy. Go slow, okay? Go slow, nice and slow. So you feel the control and the contraction in the muscles. That's number one. Number two is get your elbows to your sides, to the sides of your rib cage. okay? That way, and it's a bit loose on my left hand. Okay, that way you can feel the exercise itself. You're not using your shoulders. Because some people when you do bicep curl, they, they, uh, they bring their elbows up. But no, keep the elbows to the side, keep the newspaper. Okay, and go. If you find this movement very difficult, you can actually take like a cloth. I don't have a cloth around me now. But you can take a cloth and just keep it and then you will know what the feeling is like. Yeah, because you're using your lats to actually just keep. Okay, and last but not least, keep yourself body straight okay just move your elbows just move your forearms and pivot at the elbow don't go and use your body okay again you don't want to be doing this way okay so i'm gonna go quarter profile and show you guys how i do my bicep curls my nice and centered okay so last exercise before we start doing a short cool down is um the bicep curl. We're going to do 10 reps. All right. And let's begin in three. Get up the elbow. Two, one, and go. Nice and slow. One, no upper body movement. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, and that was ten reps of all six of the exercises shown. So at least now you guys know what to do. We're going to do a short cool down, and what I'm going to do after this is answer your frequently asked questions given to me by our PR and comms team, okay? So, let's start with some ankle, oop, wait, never mind, that's gonna drop, it's free. Okay, start with ankle rotations to do it. Start our nice and short cool down. And change, other side. Okay, we're gonna do the lunge stretch, one foot forward, one foot back. Okay, we're stretching the calf, both feet pointing forward. Holding it for about 8 to 10 seconds. Change. Other side. Hey, hamstring stretch. I'm going to do all the exercises in standing now, actually. So, hamstring stretch. Keeping the front leg straight, back straight, reaching down. I can't even touch my toes this way, but it's okay. Because I'm feeling the stretch at my hamstrings there. And slowly come up and change other side. Alright, slowly come up front thigh stretch. Okay. Remember, if you can't bend your knees this much, you can put it on the chair like what I did for the warm up. But for the purpose of the cool down video, I'm just going to show how I'll do it in standing. And change, other side. Okay, release. Side stretch, one hand on the waist, the other hand reach over, making a heart shape. And you can mirror image this photo and, and it'll be a heart shape. And change other side. Okay, back to the center. Fingers interlock forwards. And 
and up. I mean, it's just I'm just interlocking my fingers up. Yep. Hands behind the head, elbows pull back. And release into chest stretch. Okay, drop the hands behind the back, interlock the fingers and stretch. Okay, release into shoulder stretch. Arms across the chest, we've done this before. And change to the side. Release triceps behind the back. Remember, same thing. I can't even touch, so it's okay if you can't. And change, other side. Okay, release. We're going to do some neck rotation. Look over to your left. this side of the neck and change at the side alrighty back to the center okay let's do some deep breathing exercises we'll do about three okay so one hand on your diaphragm or your tummy one hand on your chest hey okay? remember try to make sure you don't raise your chest when you breathe in okay ready let's breathe together and breathe in and out. Breathe in. And out. Last one. Breathe in. Hold it there. And breathe out. Okay. Well done everyone for joining me for the exercise. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a seat. Okay, and I'm going to be answering your questions. Let me just tilt this down so it's more... Eh, okay. So, um, where's my phone? All right, let's have a read of the questions that... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Let's have a read of the questions that there may be... Uh... Okay, so um, I have a couple of questions. So, okay, before I answer the questions, what I'm going to do is just going to quickly have a read. Okay, so the first question right now is how can you tell if your posture is wrong? Okay, so what I'd like to do is <clears throat> before, before you, know, you know how in our gym during, I mean, all of our three centers actually, have mirrors where you can use to actually control and check your posture so when you're at home what you can do is i mean in your bedroom not not in your bathroom where it's too slippery okay check your posture as you do the exercises my my mirror is over there so whenever i do the exercises i'm actually looking at the mirror to make sure i'm doing my exercises correctly for you guys okay so one thing you can do in order to check um, your posture is obviously looking in the mirror or hey technology right record yourself okay use your phone prop it down use the selfie camera on your phone all right and just hit record do the exercise okay do the exercise and watch yourself all right you can watch yourself from different angles as well putting your phone on one side and then doing the exercises and everything and then you rewatch and be like hey my back is so curved when i do my shoulder um presses exercises or my hip reduction Ooh, yeah Fanny never tell me now I realize my hip always turns out yes so this is how you monitor fun fact okay since it's Friday fun Fendi Friday fact okay I only found out about my shoulder press thingies okay when I started working at Singapore Heart Foundation all right because of all the mirrors around right I was teaching someone then I realized that's not 
a good posture. So I went to do a bit of research on it and I realized, yes, I'm supposed to actually be keeping my body nice and upright. Okay, so nice. Fitness Friday, fun fact, Fendi Friday. Okay, okay. So yes, two options. You can use a mirror or use a mobile device to record yourself and replay yourself, um, watch yourself when you um, are done exercising. Next question. Why is it important to have the right posture when exercising? Okay, so this is a very important question because um, when you don't have the right posture when you exercise, okay, especially when you lock your elbows and everything, while you are, yes, you are exercising, but you are also causing, potentially causing harm to your body, okay, especially with that arching of the back. If you do, if you keep doing this repetitively, Okay, it's gonna add even more stress to your joints, to your body, okay? And you might even injure yourself in the future if you keep doing this incorrectly. So that's why when you do exercises, it has to be of proper posture. Second reason why is that this, the proper way to do it, especially when you, you know, you do, when you do too fast exercises, they're not gonna be efficient, okay? You realize the two things that I covered is safety, and efficiency and these are the most important things that you need to look out for when you do home-based exercises as well as any exercises actually okay so what you need to look out for is to make sure that you're safe when you do the exercises hence wise you correct your posture and you have to be efficient because hey you're gonna be exercising anyway you need to make sure you make the full use of it all right that's why you do it properly nice and slow nice and controlled okay leg extension slow nice and controlled that's what you need to be doing, okay? Safety and efficiency. That's coming from me, okay? So, oh, more questions are popping in actually. So, another question is, I was exercising last time, but recently got some lumps on both legs, okay? Wondering if any stretching exercises will help to release those lumps. Okay, so, um, what I suggest is, obviously if it's, it's lumps that you've never seen before, I would suggest going to your GP and having it checked out because obviously through, just through word of mouth, I can't really assess what these lumps are. If exercising is, is, is it causing you pain? No, okay. If exercises, if exercising is causing pain in these lumps and everything, I would suggest stopping exercise. Um, what you can do is if, if exercise does not, cause these lumps to go away. Um, obviously, number one, I would still suggest going to a GP to find out what it is. I mean, there was one time I had like a, a weird pimple on my hand and I was so scared, I went to the GP. The GP said, oh, it's just acne on your arm. They was like, hmm, okay. Yeah, I know, I, I have hormones, that's why. So, okay, so I was so scared. Yeah, that's what I do because I always go to like a doctor for like, to make sure that everything's okay. Um, yeah, I would suggest just heading to your GP asking if these lumps are okay. If the GP said, hey, these lumps are, are completely fine. It's okay. Um, I don't think um, stretches um, would affect the lumps unless uh, it's in the muscular layer. Then maybe it might cause some pain if you do your stretches for the for the lumps itself. If not, I think you can continue to exercise, continue to do your stretches, continue to do your low intensity exercise, your high intensity exercise, as long as it doesn't cause you discomfort or pain in this in this specific area but coming from me as a healthcare professional i would suggest seeing your gp if this is something new that you've never seen before all right okay all right so i think those are the only questions that i have okay just some other tips and pointers okay um before i do my recap Okay, one, one tip that I would like to give everybody um, during um, this uh, circuit break, the mini circuit breaker period is we, I have just two rules, safety and efficiency, okay? Number one is obviously safety, okay? Because if you're not safe, yeah, you're going to be putting yourself at risk of injury. So think about every time you do exercise, okay? Think, is it safe to do? All right, not only for joints and posture, but target heart rate. If you're going to do like a, a workout which involves a lot of um, cardio, you have to make sure for those of you, uh, for those of our heart uh, clients out there, you have to make sure you stay within your target heart rate. Don't exceed your target heart rate because you know it. Again, this is why we give you the target heart rate. 
right? So safety is number one. And obviously, if you have other conditions like osteoporosis and all this kind of thing, you need to know what exercises are not uh, good for you slash might be dangerous for you to do. Okay, like certain extension exercises or flexion-based exercises. Depends, you know, if you have osteoarthritis, there are certain exercises that, you know, that may not be, be beneficial for you as well, which brings me to my next point of efficiency. Okay, I can't stress this enough, safety and efficiency. If, let's say, you know, walking is going to cause you discomfort or, you know, that kind of thing, then it's not going to be efficient because you're not going to be enjoying the exercise. All right, so make sure this exercise is going to be efficient for you when you actually perform them. Last but not least, I know it's number three, but it should be number one, but obviously I can't. Safety has to be number one, okay? Last but not least, try to enjoy doing exercise. Why, why I enjoy being a physio is because I get to teach people exercise, how to do it correctly, how to teach them to exercise safely, and this is why I love my job, All right? So thank you guys for making me enjoy, um, for letting me enjoy my job and basically giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge and um, making sure that all of you are exercising safely and efficiently. Last but not least, I want to just recap. Um, we will we'll end the recap. Remember, we have six exercises, okay? I'm just going to regurgitate out all the, the six exercises if I can remember them. Okay, the first one is a squat. Okay, rule number one, don't let your knees cross your toes, okay? Arms forward for balance. Number three, have your chair for support. Uh, have your chair for... for, for um, to go down basically you don't have to go down as far number two for your lunges okay i'm sorry because that was where we got cut off number one think of yourself as an elevator number two widen your base of support okay widen your base of support and number three obviously same thing don't let your knees cross your toes third one was the shoulder press right so same thing don't lock out the joints don't lock out your joints don't use your neck to lift up your shoulders and last but not least don't do excessive thoracic extension okay which might not be good for you to be doing okay the three seated leg extension same thing don't lock out the joints go slow okay go slow and don't be doing this leaning back movement when you do the seated leg extensions number five hip abduction don't have to go too high okay you don't have to go too high because you need to keep your alignment Number two is take it nice and slow. Okay, squeeze your glutes at the at the at the top of the exercise and then come back down. Number three is uh, don't turn your leg out when you do your hip abduction exercise. Okay, because you don't want to be working hip flexors, you want to be working your glutes. All right. Last but not least, for your bicep curl, my favorite thing to tell people: cap your elbow, cap your elbow to the side of your rib cage. All right, bend slowly don't just keep going like a machine all right and last but not least the last tip would be not to lean back it's the same thing with shoulder extensions okay shoulder uh presses you don't want to be leaning back when you do these exercises that is it from me um again i'm very happy to do be, be doing all these uh exercise videos again because um it's again i like to share knowledge i like to make sure that everyone is safe when they do the exercises if this, me doing this helps you guys exercise better, safer, more efficiently, I'm happy because when you guys are happy, I'm happy because that's what it is. Happiness is a drug that spreads, okay? So that being said, again, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on my stream. I do apologize again for the crash of my computer. I do apologize. I haven't been doing this in a long time, so that's why I haven't really figured out how to do this again. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, again, happy exercising. Enjoy the next the, the weekend that's coming up um, for for my fellow um, Muslim clients. Salamat Haria, Masayatin, and I wish everyone good health. Stay safe. Keep your family safe. Stay hydrated when you exercise. All right, and let's hope and pray that this COVID pandemic um, blows over soon. So that's, that's it from me. My name is Fendi. I'm a physiotherapist here at the Singapore Heart Foundation and I wish everyone a good day, a good weekend and a good year ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.